Want to guess my A1C based on my time and range, my average glucose, and I don't know, all the other stuff it says in here? Yes. All right, during the month of August, which was like a whole month ago, my blood sugars were a little rough. I was definitely like letting things relax a bit during that last chunk of summer. We went on vacation. There was gluten-free donuts made in this like really unique donut place in Maine. And okay, I was eating a lot of carbs. I thought, oh my gosh, my A1C is gonna be like quite a bit higher than usual the next time I have it done. All right, so first, my time and range is down to 76%. I'm usually in the high 80s. Then I saw that my average glucose level was 133. Usually I'm in the 120s. So 133, that definitely means my A1C is gonna be up in the sixes instead of down below six. I was not thrilled about this. My A1C has been down below six for most of the last 10 years, ever since I first wore a CGM, learned all that extra data, applied it to my pregnancies, and learned how to manage tighter blood sugar levels. Hey, I gotta tell you something really quick. I can help you hit your time and range and your A1C goals. I can help you lose weight and improve your relationship with food in my new Diabetes Nerd Patreon channel. On October 26th, Patreon is an exclusive subscription-based platform. You're gonna get exclusive content from me that is all about tips to help you thrive with type one or type two diabetes. Check it out, Diabetes Nerd on Patreon, launching October 26th. All right, I'm gonna guess, 5.6. 5.6? No way, that's like, that's like pregnancy intensive diabetes management. I don't, I mean, hey, I could do it, but I am not working that hard right now. But your last one was 5.9, what's the difference? Oh, there's a big difference, Terameo. There is a big difference, okay? 5.9, I can do that without like obsessing over every detail. I can go up above like 140, 150, which I do. And you know, yes, could I manage my blood sugars tighter than I'm managing them right now? Sure. but. Like, you know, right now in my life, I don't want to dedicate that much energy to my blood sugars. I dedicate enough to thrive. Could I dedicate more? Yeah, I guess. But like, life is busy. It's always this like juggling act, you know? Fair. Okay, but 5.6, to get your A1C down to 5.6, that means that you're like definitely pre-bolusing and you're managing your blood sugars so they don't go over 140, 150, like almost ever. Like that is intensive management. And that's being really careful with carbs. And you know, it doesn't mean you're not eating carbs, but it means you're being really careful with all your doses around carbs. Or 5.6, maybe you're on a ketogenic diet. You're not eating any plants and vegetables. That's definitely possible too. I don't want to eat a ketogenic diet. I get into that in a different video. I'm not getting into it again here. Okay, but here's the good news. Even though my blood sugar levels were a little rough during the month of August, it turns out my A1C did not suffer. How is that possible? Well, get this. I mean, A1C is actually a little more complicated than we realize. We're taught to think that our A1C is just like the culmination of the last three months of blood sugars, but it's not that simple. Actually, here's what you need to know. Month one doesn't affect your A1C result as much as month three. So Ginger got her A1C checked in September. That means the months of July and August won't matter as much as the month of September. Anybody know how you actually get an A1C result besides, you know, the blood draw thing? I do. The A1C test measures how much sugar is stuck to your red blood cells throughout your entire body. So your A1C is all about your red blood cells and your body is actually turning over red blood cells all the time, making new ones. When you're pregnant, you're turning over red blood cells more quickly than when you're not pregnant. So a woman's A1C when she's pregnant can actually stay lower and look lower than it might actually be. Okay, get this. 50% of your A1C result is from the most recent part of your test, like the four weeks right before your test. 25% is from the month before that, and the other 25% is from the two months before the test. Okay, so that means it's constantly changing. It's like a moving target because your red blood cells are constantly turning over. Okay, one more thing before I reveal my A1C. Your A1C can be translated into an estimated average glucose level, which is why when I saw 133 as like my average blood sugar in my CGM data, I was worried 
because I knew that 133 translates to an A1C in the sixes, not the fives. A 6.0 A1C translates to an average blood sugar of 126. That means you gotta like kind of hover around the 120s for a good chunk of the day to get your A1C around 6%. I want my A1C in the fives, which means I need to hover somewhere below 126 for a good chunk of the day. It doesn't mean I need to do it perfectly. And I already know from the last 10 years of maintaining an A1C at or below six, that perfection is not necessary, that I don't need to be obsessed with every little detail, every blood sugar level in order to maintain this A1C level. All right, tell us what it was. I wanna know if you're doing okay. I'm fine, I'm fine. Okay, my A1C was, drum roll please, 5.9. High five for me. <laughs> Yay. Good work. Thank you. Yeah, that's a lot of work. I was kind of beating myself up for what was happening in the end of August when I was kind of slacking off, but it's okay. It's okay. It turns out that I'm actually kind of a little hard on myself. I'm always trying to keep my blood sugar in my target range, but I try not to go crazy about it. And I try not to really beat myself up when things aren't going perfectly. Yeah, I see when you're high, you just try to work to get it back down. Yeah, and I mean, I do get frustrated. Yeah, I've heard you swear at your CGM. I've also heard you say insulin's not doing what it's supposed to do. Oh, the insulin, it's all the insulin's fault. Want some help getting your A1C down? Do you have burnout? Are you overeating during lows? Do you need to learn how to exercise living with type one diabetes? Look, you can find books on Amazon. You can find free resources everywhere. You can find guides and articles and endless stuff on my website. But what it all starts with is just being patient and looking at the data and saying, okay, my A1C is higher than I want. What can I do differently? Sometimes it means eating differently or starting an exercise routine or maybe just adjusting your insulin doses with help from your healthcare team. You're not doomed to be stuck wherever your A1C is. There are options and tools and changes you can make, but you got to approach it with like a mindset of what can I do differently to get a different result.